And we are live. What's up? Hello, you beautiful retail investors. It's your host, Bill Steele and Bud Mosh Sharif. We're going to be talking about a couple of crazy things tonight. One, the apparent potential silver medal squeeze. Ooh. And uh, we're also going to be taking a look at a couple of different YouTubers and, uh, you know, going over some of their highlights, you know, put, plug up a couple of different guys in the game right now and uh, see, you know, what they're all about and what they're talking about to kind of give you guys a highlight of what's going on in the YouTube investor community. I think I like doing it every night before going to bed. Yeah, it's definitely a habit. So we will, <laughs> without further ado, get right into it. We transitioned over... And first, we're going to be talking about Silver. Really quick, brief overview. If you guys missed yesterday's uh, live stream, um, we went over kind of a, a DD, a pretty heavy DD on Silver and what's going on in the Silver market, uh, why certain uh, ET, uh, Silver ETFs um, are potentially dangerous for retail investors to get into and you know, kind of how the delivery mechanisms of silver happens, you know, you know what happens with certain pricings, uh, a couple of different things is, is kind of what we uh, talked about yesterday, but we're, we're going to get right back into it here, you guys. Let's see. Let's see. All right. So, again, you guys, uh, just going over some of the basics uh, about what's going on with silver. These are some graphs uh, here talking about the uh, nominal GDP to what's going on with silver. Uh, he went in some Venezuelan examples. Yeah, scroll up, scroll up on the top. Um, this one, this is the thing that I really, really um, thought was interesting. Um, what, if you go up to the chart above that, it kind of goes over how we're, I mean, we, it's, we're printing more money than that's actually coming out. Mm -hmm. um, the whole broad money supply, which goes super, super high compared to the mo actual money that's actually coming out. Mm -hmm. And that smock indicator, which it hits um, right down here the first time, second time, and now we just hit the third time um, starting in April. So that's going to... I've started buying in already myself. I started yeah. opening up some positions and slowly going to, I guess, average up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. And if shoot, if there's any uh you know sudden drops, average down if you get a chance. <laughs> yeah. uh, any chance you get by the dip on this for sure. Not investment Financial advice. advice. <laughs> yeah. By the way. <laughs> hey hey, how's it going, Kartik? Uh, let's see. Yeah, the Fed. So, so he goes into what's going on with the Feds and what their solutions are. He goes into unemployment. This one's an important one right here. Total silver's delivery in the first quarter. Pretty much, I'm going to make this really easy, really smooth brain. Um, and then we're going to dive right into what's going on with some of the other uh, YouTubers in the community and kind of what their highlights have been and, and what we agree with and don't agree with. Um, but again, guys, if you like what you're seeing, be sure to hit the like button. Um, give us a little boost in the algorithm. Share it with some friends. Share it to Facebook. Tweet about it. Uh, if you are a stock Twitter stock twits kind of person be sure to stock twits it as well that'd be major help all right comex warehouse report summary yep yep so the smooth brain analysis pretty much of this you guys is that you need to be careful about which etfs you're using to get silver be aware that there is a, a, a higher and increasing demand for rare earth metals uh silver being one of them and uh it's something that you should have on your radar if you don't have it already um and yep we have the link to what you're seeing here uh in the description uh and you know we we do in the future plan on getting into a pretty thorough video um uh, video playlist about rare earth metals uh kind of each one of the different categories of them you know lithium uh gold uh and and what their value is in the digital in the current digital age that we live in and, and what is going on uh socio uh, uh rather geopolitically uh there's a lot of interesting moves being made by china there's a lot of interesting moves being made by russia the united states and a couple other countries on uh, their positions with certain rare earth metals monopolization of certain rare earth metal processes uh and of course the legislation and the laws that go into uh, all of the countries uh that are involved 
with the processing of these metals and, and, and what they're producing with them. And, and as as of course and, and as we continue to get further into the uh, the digital age and as there's a higher demand for, you know, VR headsets and Apple phones and Apple Watch. I mean, you guys are already watching it. You're you're I'm sure you're watching us through your phone, through some kind of computer. All of it was made through rare earth metals and VR it's, all the way. It, yeah, it's it's gonna become um, increasingly more important that you keep aware of uh, where these su- where these su- where the supplies are at, where the supply chain's located, and uh, how exactly they're getting up on all these. So we're going to move into a little bit of a critique, uh, not necessarily a critique, more of like a spotlight, a tuber nightcap is kind of what we're calling it, of our friend here, Keenan Grace. I really like this guy. I love his energy. Awesome. Um, you, you guys will see as we, we go through some of the highlights of what he's talking about. We've also pulled up a couple of the different companies that he's referring to, uh, Pallets and Technologies. This is an, an, an increasing uh, demand, you know, for for the female consumer market. The female Viagra. Yeah, it's essentially female <laughs> Viagra. Yep. We got the Nanox Imaging. So some some crazy stuff going on here with uh, X Ray and and what they're doing as a company. And then we're gonna kind of go into a, a Reddit post that was highlighted by the YouTuber. Dead Inside. Who, if you guys haven't checked that guy out, um, you definitely need to. He's really, really good at at what he does, and this is him right here. He he provides pretty, I would argue, like some of the best um, uh, cases for why oh, yeah. he has invested in certain companies and, and what 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 that means to you. Uh, so yeah, he's a really good YouTuber as well. If you guys haven't checked him out, be sure to check him out. Um, and, and and we'll get back to Keenan Grace here. Go ahead and turn on the desktop audio for everyone. All right. And here we go. This is not financial advice, but you already yes, know. Yes, sir. Not Thanks financial you, advice, baby. baby. So now let's get straight to the point. Hit that notification bell. Shout out to the 60,000 of you that already hit the bell. Oh, yeah. Good point, you guys. Hit the notification bell for us, too. Yeah, subscribe we'll go to here. Channel. And the first <laughs> banger on the list is Palatin Technologies. Take a subscribe. And stock PTN. analysts are saying that this one is going to 2 to 3x. Now I want you to hit that Patreon link. All right. and get in the Discord so this and get in the PTN, you guys, you guys get this is Palatin Technologies. This is the, the site we're talking about here. So he, he picked PTN. Uh, for a couple of different reasons, and, and he believes that that uh, that it it could you know potentially have a higher upside. You know, it could be a good a quick short term play. Um, but of course, you, you have to take a look at what's going on with the company, right? So we'll go into I think the fem- the the female sexual dysfunction is, is kind of what is the most interesting thing to the me. Highlighted one, yeah. Yeah, it, and and I'll let um uh, uh Benmash kind of take over and and talk a little bit more about what we're looking at here. Okay, so the number one thing which is causing this company to trend right now is their female dysfunction medication. Um, the name is v- v- Valesi, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was looking into some um, research articles, and basically it is a melanocortin receptor agonist. And the interesting thing for me is there's no like mechanism of action which is um, published. Yeah. Um, so, so for those who don't know, uh, a mechanism of action. Also, for those who don't know, Benmash has a pretty extensive uh, 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 education in medical. His family's, uh, you know, his father's a doctor. You know, uncle's a doctor. He he understands uh, kind of the the lingo. So, break down what a mechanism of action is for us, um, please. So, a mechanism of action is like a physiological. Um, it's like a like a receptor, a drug touching a receptor, and it creates a downstream effect of multiple different scenarios and um for example a mechanism of action for like a antidepressant mm-hmm. would be it goes in binds to a receptor and it creates a movement of dopamine serotonin mm-hmm. etc so the, the mechanism of action i would surmise just from what you told me would be kind of the uh the you know end result or end effect um uh combined with uh the initial uh uh, uh Interac- interaction, chemical interaction going on within the brain. So the interaction that happens and then the downstream effect. So uh, he said, you said that there was... It's a melanocortin receptor agonist. Um, you can just open up uh, any kind of research article, whether it's from like PubMed or... Um, and we can kind of check that out let's too. See. Yeah, yeah let's, let's pull it up. So mechanism of action. Um, melanocortin. 
Oh, so you want me to type in mechanism of action for melanocortin? Yeah, melan melan melanocortin receptor. Right here? Yeah, sure. Oh, this is for pulmonary disease. So there's a lot of, um, in sterogenesis, there's a lot of different um, mechanisms this, act, this acts on particularly. And what this company is um, focused in on is for uh, female dysfunction. And um, there isn't any, no, like, we don't know exactly for sure how it affects just sexual dysfunction, mm -hmm. but um, studies have shown so far for male and female that it um, is a solution for hypoactive sexual desire disorder. Ooh. And erectile dysfunction as well. Really? Yeah. And that's for this? Uh... Yes, this particular drug, Palatin Technologies, is. Wow. Yeah. So, Valisi is indicated for treatment for premenopausal women with acquired generalized hypoactive sexual desire disorder. This is characterized by sexual desire that marked distress or interpersonal difficulty and is not due to a coexisting. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Focal hyperpigmentation. So, so there's some side effects and stuff like that. For full prescribing information, please see. So it's an injection. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yep. And so where are they at um, in terms of this this being available? Um, I believe it has gotten FDA approval. Let's check um, out. I think he talks about that right here. Yeah. So let's check get out. Get up on the plates as early as we are and hit that Weibo link so you can get into the extended hours you owe it for having feet. AKA, this company is known for having female Viagra. And at the time of this recording, this company is under $200 billion in market cap and five star. Okay, so. Hypo, not hyper, hypo with hype back in 1986 and they developed so if you guys see what he's doing here this is a big tip for you retail investors to understand um what's going on with this particular uh, approach the, the the method of approach that it seems keenan grace is taking in an obvious fashion so this right here you guys is the uh about palettes and technologies you can find on robin hood or on weeble anytime any of these different uh, uh retail investor platforms you use to trade you can click when you click the ticker symbol and you go into it, you can actually scroll down and find the uh, about a little bit about the company, what they're doing. And then you can even in Weeble, I, I prefer Weeble myself simply because it allows for the actual published documents from that particular company. It allows you to see uh, the publicity surrounding that company, the news, uh, their court, their financials. So they, they have it all nice and streamlined um, to where you can access it all very easily. Whereas I have not found uh, as as much information available through Robin Hood. So let's see what he has to say here. Therapies for women with hypo, not hyper, hypoactive sexual disorder, aka this company is known for having female Viagra. And at the time of this recording, cool. this company is under $200 billion in market cap and five-star Wall Street analyst not too long ago, he said that their FDA approved medication, the female Viagra, is gaining commercial success, and this, along with other things, is going to send the stock headed up forward. Now, three awesome. Wall Street analysts rated. That's awesome. So yes, yeah, so uh, it seems that this uh, particular uh, injection is receiving a lot of commercial validation, and it's growing. It's the company is projected to grow due to this. Uh, particular medication. There's a huge market for this. Yeah, I mean, two hundred billion dollars for a market cap yeah. is pretty massive, you guys. Um, and I mean, shoot, well, I wonder. I'd just be curious, just to know what the market. How? Uh, let's say how. What would be the best question to ask for Viagra, like actual Viagra? For how much okay. Viagra is, yeah, how much Viagra sold is too easier? So. <laughs> <laughs> Safe to take it one time, sold each year. Let's do sold each year. Let's let you turn around. Viagra brought in about 1.6 billion in 2016 Jeez, global crazy. sales. I'm sure it's even more these days, you guys. Holy cow! 2016 plus you That's got just about, off of yeah. one. Yeah. So the market cap for for um, Palatin is referring to the company, you guys. Uh, this is an example. Uh, Viagra by itself just the the, the product the, yeah. 
sold 1.6 billion. They um, have a lot of competition too. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. So that's that's pretty awesome. So let's Three dollars on the high. So how are we gonna play this one? You gotta treat this one like a penny stock. Hey, All right, so yeah, uh, here he gives a little bit of advice on on how to make your what the best way he would because it's not financial advice take a position on this. Um, so we're we're gonna skip that, you guys, because uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're not trying to give advice on on how to take a position. We do have some videos upcoming where we're gonna be showing you guys live some of the analysts here in uh, SNN and how we make our trades and how we make our plays. Um, but for now, you know, we, we don't even want to get into that. We're just providing you guys education information uh, on what is going on in the market and, and kind of what's being, you know, hotly talked about in the YouTuber community to give you a synthesis. How, how many hours ago was this video put out? Uh, I think it was like four or five. Oh, yeah. So I was just looking at it. It closed post -mar uh, after market at 76 cents. Oh, wow. So, so PLTN. Yeah. PLTN closed at no, 76 PTN, yeah. Oh, no. P PTN closed at 76 cents. Yeah. So Probably that Keenan Grace they were, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's interesting. That's interesting. The five cent range. Why? Because I'm trying. Who was Palantir? You no. know what time yeah. it is. Palantir. PLTR. They yeah. Graduated to strike. So if you guys don't know who who Palantir is, uh, <sighs> Kathy Woods loves it. It's part of her her ETF. Uh, there, there. I mean, here I'll just go ahead and pull Arc it invest. up. Um, I I believe yesterday, um, they bought one point two million dollar. Additional shares of PLTR. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, this isn't going to be their actual website's not going to be a good one. Uh, about Palantir, there we go. Why we're here? We believe in augmenting human intelligence, not replacing it. So, uh, we make products for human-driven analysis of real-world data. We build our company around mission-driven engineering. So, guys, these guys do a lot of crazy things. Palantir, they do. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they do satellites as well. Correct? You got so, it's a long, hold, long, long hold for these yeah, people. They, but. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Uh, and they're they're, you know, they they look good, they smell good, they feel good. Um, uh, Kathy likes them. Yeah, and and of course, you know, if. You guys don't know who Kathy Wood is. This is the godmother of stonks right now. Uh, yeah, look at this, look at this. I love this. <laughs> Bitcoin, Kathy Woods, and Elon, baby. Yeah, guys, so Kathy Woods, she has like some crazy ETF, some tech space. She's really, really well educated on this. She also talks on mainstream media about different types of stocks, all kinds of, of really good information. Um, but yeah, uh, Palantir is definitely something. Uh, it's in my portfolio. Omar, oh, you, absolutely. You, you, you're, you're a position holder of that. It's um, a good time to buy the dip. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, exactly. Kathy right Wood now. bought the dip. Yeah. Yep. Amount of shares Double down. Not actually a so we'll a keep good going. All right. We're going to. Sorry, guys. We don't like commercials. Mm. I'd be curious to see this whole full prescription thing. I'd be actually curious. Uh, guys, let us know in the comments if you would like to see us uh, Take it. get uh, <laughs> <laughs> live. Let's see what yeah, happens. Let's do a <laughs> let's do a Bremel Bremelettonite injection live for males. No, um, you guys, let us know. We're we're considering, you know, bringing. We we do have a pretty strong network in the medical community. We're considering getting some medical, some doctors, uh, some people that are in fertility. Uh, particularly getting them on a kind of a lo longer form podcast to discuss, you know, uh, this amongst other uh, a female. Um, there's a female contraceptive. What was the uh, EVFM? EVFM. That's right. So it's EVFM. What was contraceptive? What was and they the, all. Um, what what was the name? So um, EVFM is. Pexi, I believe. Right. What was it? Pexi. Pexi. That's or pe right. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So. This is another crazy one, you guys. Um, it's kind of the first of its kind. It is a hormone-free prescription vaginal gel that is FDA approved to prevent pregnancy, and you use it only when you need it. I would um, so. There's also some really crazy science surrounding um, that this gel uh, has a pretty big impact on the transmission of. That, that's a separate product that they have. Oh, that's a separate yeah, one. And that's um, going through the FDA approval pipelines right now. I believe oh. it's in phase two. And um, it, it provides um, from the, so the research so far, the statistics look really good against um, providing a um, a barrier uh, to transmission of chlamydia and gonorrhea, which is, is a huge problem. Uh, yeah. This is the one. EVO 100. This is big. So, yeah, this is huge, you guys. This is what gives EVFM 
in our book, you know, this, this is why we've taken positions with EVFM. Um, EVO 100, an investigational candidate for the prevention of urogenital chlamydia and gonorrhea in women. Also, if I pr- pronounce, uh, is it, how do you say this? Uh, urogenital. Uh, okay, yes, yeah, I got it. Um, our investigation drug candidate, EVO 100, vaginal gel is designed to reduce certain vaginal infections by balancing pH and a couple of different things. And right now it's in phase three, you guys. That's huge. Uh, so it's, it's something to, to definitely check out. There's also BV, uh, kill BV associated pathogenic bacteria. Uh, and this is in phase one. So, so these guys are pretty far into their testing and into their approval processes for getting this to market. So if you can get in on a play before it hits market, of course, as they bring more products to the market, they generate more revenue, more profits. The company, you know, grows increasing on market cap, you know, all, all types of really big things that come from that. Um, so we'll skip this and get back over to Get Phoenix early Grace. access to cancer type imaging and things that can discover cancer. Ah, yes. So he's talking about Nanox right Earth here. Nanox imaging. Nano X imaging. Ticker symbol. N. Yep. O X. So N-O-X. that is this company right here, you guys. Uh, the X ray reimagined. This, this, so anything medical, you could uh, already safely assume. It's incredibly profitable and it's not going anywhere uh, as long as it's, it's a relevant technology. So the X ray is still used uh, very, very rigorously. Um, ooh, let's see what's going on here. Ah, that's a live demo. I think you guys can check that out if you want. That's going to be a little too long. Um, Nanox Arc Prototype Assembly Center. Key opinion leaders. Let's see what's going on here. So we got some radiologists. You know, these, these are some... I'm Norbert Pelk. I'm Professor of Radiology Emeritus at Stanford University. Yeah. As a graduate student, <laughs> yeah. I research in... Uh, so if you guys want to check this out, there's further resources. Check it out. Check out the team. On the about us. Let's see. Um, Where? The CEO and whatnot. Up here. Oh, yeah. Leadership. CEO ran... Oh, you're kind. The founder of the wireless charging industry. Whoa. Interesting. Interesting. So you can market things. Okay. CFO, Mr. Mayan has served financial leadership positions across Perigo, Cisco Systems. Okay. Yeah, they got some heavy hitters here. Mm, yeah, that, that's some heavy hitters. Mm-hmm. Orbitech, yep. Chief marketing officer. Let's see what she did. Global Corporations, yep, yep, yep. Oh, Heineken, T- Temple, Heineken, Cyprus, and Division Manager. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, they got a stacked squad. Look at this, Ooh, yeah. bro. And when it comes Deep. to biotech stocks, um, it's always, you got to remember, it's a high risk, high reward kind of situation mm-hmm. because FDA approvals are, you know, it can make or break um, the stock. So it's high risk, high reward. There's a lot of Cisco involvement here. Hmm. So there's a lot. I've seen Cisco three times now in their, in their directors. So they've got, got, they've got, you know, they're backed by people that have industry experience in being in big tech. Cisco's it's good to know they have an MD on board company. too. That's one big thing oh, yeah. I look for whenever it's a biotech company. If there's yeah. no medical doctors on board, then something's a little off. Yeah, PhD, MD, PhD. Yeah, they got some education on them. In my book, education doesn't mean anything. Uh, neither does your past projects. I want to see what's going on now, but that's just how I look at things. That's how I do analysis. Uh, you don't get any, you don't get any historical credit in my book, but that's, that's just, that's, that's just a good me. way to look at it for sure. Yeah. That's just me. Um, all right. This is a medical systems company that has the potential to solve mm-hmm. major world problems worldwide. Now let's talk yep, about yep. it. According to the world health organization, two thirds of the world's population does- Yep, so they're looking to speed things up because they can't get early access to cancer type imaging mm-hmm, and things mm-hmm. that can discover cancer at the early yep, turn so. this one into a strike experience a lot of the market to the same article xbox m s f t and yeah so i noticed it this morning when it was pre-market you guys uh there was uh if you were like pre-market five minutes before uh uh, open today, you'll notice that everything on, I mean, on my watch list was red except oh, yeah. for two companies, Microsoft and uh, GameStop. <laughs> Those are the only pre-market uh, uh, companies that were doing any good. Um, so we're going to finish up with what's going on here. <laughs> and uh, let's see. We'll exit Valisi, exit leadership, and then we will exit here, 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 here. 
And we're going to finish off with what our example in, uh, from Dead Inside, uh, shout out to him for this uh, particular thing, on conviction and being involved in trading like as a retail don't investor. Invest in a company you don't believe in. Boom. What you're doing is setting yourself I'm going to increase because. that up, and I'm also going to set that back and let him say it one more time because that's exactly what we're going to be closing today's live stream with you guys is a conversation and discussion about conviction. I can't believe it's going down like this. Don't invest in the companies you don't believe in. Boom. You heard it from him. You'll hear it from this guy. You'll hear it from us. You'll hear it from everyone that invests. Don't invest in a company that you don't believe in, and if you don't know enough about a company to believe in it, then don't be a part of it. Don't know take a hold. position. Yeah, exactly. Know what you hold and hold what you know. Um, this is a, a, a an advice from an Apple holder for 15 years now. Always read, if you bought Apple 10 years ago, it would be XXS. It would be worth XXX today. Everyone hears that. If you bought Apple at this time, if you bought Walmart at this time, if you bought Amazon at this time, oh, it would be worth this much today. People assume it was luck or smart to buy then and easy hold and how solid the company was i read thousands of articles over the years saying apple peaked android is caught up text dated prices price to high sales down you name it holding long is hard yeah this is exactly the highlight holding long is hard period no matter the company no matter the press uh stock down or trading sideways doesn't matter it's always hard so he ends with uh, i'm long on tesla netflix Peloton overvalued or not. So that's things to note, you guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and close out what we're doing here. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, you beautiful retail investors. We went through a little bit on the potential and silver squeeze. Uh, we're going to be bringing you guys a little bit more information on rare earth metals and what's going on in that particular I would I would call it its own you know sector if you will um, because it's just such a, a base uh, foundation to the modern society that we live in uh, and what's going on with it geopolitically is very very interesting um, and there will be a lot of effects uh, uh, in the next five you know in the next year in the next five years in the next 10 years as we continue down things will change and things will be in effect for rare earth metals um, if you guys you know, liked what you saw, be sure to hit us with a thumbs up. Reach out to us on social medias. If you haven't heard, check out the description for our 1K Stonk giveaway. We'll be announcing some winners at the start of next week for this next round of selectees. We will also go over what happened with the last section, uh, the last two selectees for the 1K Stonk giveaway. Uh, that's it for me, you guys. I'm your host, Bill Steele. And my Sharif. Have a wonderful night, you beautiful retail investors.